it on his tail. If he can just keep on the tail of Kevin. We might have a word now to Dick Johnson. And if you're listening to us, Dick, just tell us what you're doing and whether you think you can keep up with this big Chevy right in front of you. Are you receiving us, Dick Johnson? Well, we can certainly see, Dick. Whether he can hear us, I don't know. Evan Green here, Dick. Can you hear us? I don't think we'll persist because he's getting to the braking area. We shouldn't talk to him there. That is a difficult part of the circle. Oh, Look at the battle going on in front. Well, the greater length of the big Camaro told on the um, Commodore. Now, Dick Johnson said, OK, he'd be slowed a bit because obviously John Harley would have liked to have gone deeper under brakes but was blocked by the big dark blue car. The Ford fans cheering when they think that Dick Johnson is about to pass one of his arch rivals in the Marlboro Holden dealer team. Back in the car again. The picture, by the way, being beamed up to the Prudential helicopter flying above him to Thank receive you, the Roy, picture. Over. Dick's still talking to his pits. He's linked up with them. Whether he can hear us, I don't know. We might just try again. This is one part of the circuit where we can speak to him with safety. If you're listening, Dick Johnson, the track looks very rough up towards this curve. Yeah, it's very rough, Evan. And there's a fair sort of an accident up the top of the... in the cutting up here. Peter Harvey. Harvey in turn hard on the heels of uh, Kevin Bartlett. That passing manoeuvre by Bartlett under brakes must be uh, enormously severe with the weight of that car on the braking system. Evan. Yes, it would. The, the brakes are a factor in this race that these drivers have to be very careful of. They can't afford to cane them too much. Peter Jensen in the Cadbury Schweppes Commodore, by the way, has been in and out of the pits twice with uh, minor troubles. That's not doing him any good. Hasimi, by the way, has passed Alan Moffat and is up into seventh place. Well, that'll be a great battle between those two Japanese makes, the Mazda RX-7 of Alan Moffat and uh, Hasemi in the Turbo Bluebird. The chopper whipping over the mountaintop, setting itself up for more great pictures that can be seen throughout this James Hardy 1000 telecast today. The pilot, Terry Lee, cameraman Doug Hanson. The Queensland RX-7, the Sydney's entry just been passed there. The driver very courteously moved over to let them through and the three big guns are on their way. Once again, the view from Dick Johnson's car. I don't know whether you're listening to us, Dick, but uh, how are you on pace with these cars? How's the race going for you at the moment? Well, obviously he's, go he's, go obviously he's going... Well, Mike, he's, uh, he's not talking to us at the moment, but goodness me, he had the legs in on John Harvey. Got by now. Will Harvey try and pass him under brakes under the John player bridge? No, Harvey can't. So Harvey has been relegated from his third position back to fifth place. And now Dick Johnson has in his sights the Chevrolet Camaro of Kevin Bartlett. Bartlett running strongly at the moment. Johnson has made up ground. Well back behind them. But has effectively pulled in Harvey, past Harvey. They both clip uh, the exit to that corner, and now he moves in for the kill, perhaps, on Kevin Bartlett, although that V8 Camaro has plenty of grunt going up to the top of the mountain. And Harvey's back to put the pressure on and take Johnson again on the inside. And Fred Geisler, who went into the fence, is now in the pits with a Commodore that has a front that looks like an old Volkswagen Beetle. There'll be a lot of work there. Come at the head of the field, Alan Grice now has a 2.5-second lead on Peter Brock. And from uh, Brock back to Kevin Bartlett, it's 15.05 seconds. Alan Moffat has retaken uh, Hasimi and assumed seventh place again in the race. And Alan Jones in the seven Seiko. Oh, no! Now, that was a, the, the flag was waved. You may have noticed a different colour flag. Now, it was an instance, something like that, that cost Dick Johnson this race two years ago. He came up the very bend. There was a truck on the circuit. He went up, like you saw there, at the last moment and hit the rock that put him out of the race. So that was almost a repeat of what happened two years ago, except, thankfully, there was no rock on the circuit waiting for Dick Johnson. But that was how fast he was going that time. You can imagine the collision when he hit that rock two years ago. So just use your imagination and understand how Dick Johnson felt in that race back in 1980. Before well, that happened just then, I was trying to say that uh, Alan Jones in the Seiko 7, RX-7, has moved up into 10th place in the race. That could be a winning position, going very well. He'll be happy with that. We'll follow Alan Jones in a while, because he is absolutely dynamite through these bends. There is no faster driver over these twisted